We are the leaders of the future and the future is today. If we only come together, we can change our destiny. You can die, you sleeping mama land. Wake up mama land. Uh, my name, my real name, is Chagulanyi St. Amo Robert. I'm 40 years old. I'm the leader of Uganda's biggest opposition political party called the National Unity Platform. I'm also a musician, uh, popularly known as Bobby Wine. Uh, actually, many people know my musical name rather than my real name. My music was initially dance and party and about the drinks and the jewels and the bling bling and the girls. Until I was about, you know, 25 when I encountered a security operative that, uh, you know, bullied me and beat the hell out of me because I was driving a fancy car. And since then I realized that uh, you know, I was not any different, and that's when my music changed and became more uh, proactive and uh, politically. More about the rights of the people and more about defense of the defenseless. I'm a simple guy. Um, I come from a country which is predominantly young. Uganda is the second youngest country in the world after Niger. 85% uh, of the population have never seen another president. General Museveni took power by force of arms in 1986 and he's been president till today. He's ruled Uganda for 31 years. Yes, yes. With five presidential terms in office, Yoweri Museveni is surrounded by controversies related to freedom of speech, human rights, allegations of nepotism, and even the killing of Ugandan citizens. We want you, Mr. President, to explain to us why you sent your troops to that area, to Kasese, were, the, to the, kill the, 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 more than 100 people. Because they were breaking the law. So I don't believe Uganda is a third world country. I believe that we only have third world leaders. So I am leading the charge of young people who want to redefine their destiny. Now, I was born in 1982, in the middle of the war. My family joined in, my grandfather and my father uh, joined into that war because my grandfather was politically active. You know, by the time I, I grew up, the family had scattered because by then my father had already been in prison. I was living with my mother in the ghetto. You know, 10 children were living in one room in the slums of Kamocha, and that's what I knew. As I was growing up, my mother would tell me, keep out of politics because it was politics that ended my family into the ghetto. It was politics that caused that. And indeed, I kept out of politics. Um, you know, I took her advice. I worked so hard. I became a successful uh, person thanks to music. By the time I was 20, I was already a celebrity. And for me, financial success was what mattered. Of course, as time went on, when I realized that regardless of how successful and how famous I became, 
you know, if I was living in a country that has no social justice, then I was as unsafe as everybody else. To the average Ugandan, social injustice is a way of life. In fact, a way of death. Because that's all they know. It's the injustice of having people pay tax while they cannot access the most basic health care. There's a law called idle and disorderly. So that catches every poor person. It is a criminalization of poverty. That and more for me is social injustice that must change. So slowly by slowly, I kept taking the steps into what people call the political space. And before I know, here I am. Robert Chagulani, a pop star turned politician who's known by the stage name Bobby Wine, is recognized as the new face of Uganda's opposition. But his rise to prominence has not been without its challenges. Bobby Wine's popularity is considered a threat to President Yoweri Museveni, who's been in office for more than 30 years. His government has arrested and prosecuted Bobby Wine several times. Man, 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 campaigning against the dictator is going to hell and back. Um, ever since I hinted that I would run against General Museveni, hell began. He decided that I shouldn't leave and an attempt was made on my life. Uh, my car was shot at. Thank goodness I survived, but my driver was shot and killed in that car. And since then, many people have been killed. Many of my friends have been picked up. Some showed up on the roadside or in the bushes, dead and rotting. Others um, were paraded in military court and sent to prison, while others simply disappeared and we've never seen them again. Still, we didn't stop, we kept going. Now, on the 3rd of November, um, 2020, that was um, the nomination day. As soon as I was nominated, I was picked by the military, pepper sprayed, beaten up, and thrown into a car, driven around, and then dumped at my house. And that was the more like the beginning of a violent cycle. Many got killed, like my brother, uh, Frank Sentesa, he got run over by a military car and was killed. Uh, my good friend Rita was run over by a car and killed. Um, they wanted to send a wave of fear. On the 18th of uh, November 2020, I was uh, picked from a, a rally and thrown into a jail. And people demonstrated, they protested, and on that very day, and the day that followed, more than 150 people were shot and killed on the streets of Kampala. Um, we didn't give up. We kept going. And again on the 30th of November 2020, my entire campaign team was rounded up, 218 young men and women, and thrown into military prison. On the eve of the election, the entire internet was switched off, electricity was switched off, TVs and radio was switched off. Journalists were arrested, some killed, others ran out of the country. I was put under house arrest and the military surrounded my house for the next 11 days. 
and I ask them what they're doing inside my compound, why they are trespassing. They told me to take my question to the spokesperson of the military. Okay. So with that state of affairs, General Museveni announced himself, announced himself winner. <laughs> And, you know, the world watched as that happened, yeah. If only the international community looked at Africa the same way they look at Europe and the rest of the world. If only the international community could hold all dictators to the same standards, African dictators and European dictators. They will be doing enough, you know. It's unfortunate that that has not been the case. While European dictators, for example, the likes of Lukashenko, the likes of Vladimir Putin are being criticized and isolated, African dictators have many times been embraced and tolerated by the West. Uh, the vision of a country that I will lead, we want to see democracy in our lifetime, to return power to the people, to make sure the vote of the people counts, to have a country where the rule of law is respected, to return democracy. We lose 300 children every day and at the age of five, that's avoidable. We lose 20 mothers giving birth every day, that's reversible. Our unemployment levels are at 80% among the youth. Um, we want to change our image internationally. We don't want to be known as a dictatorship. We want to be in a family of democratic nations. We want to have a happy, free, healthy, and prosperous population. It's one thing that keeps me going is the knowledge that what we are doing is right. The knowledge that history will absolve us. The knowledge that the people are standing with us. By my music has been banned, you know, my concerts, have been banned. I'm an illegal person. But the more I am hounded, is the more people support me. When I walk the street, man, I feel the love. You would see the love. So that also keeps me reminded that the people are fearlessly with us. Yaga, 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 yaga